Hello my fellow chatterers and book game lovers and anyone else who's popped in because you're curious about what this is or you have got a bit lost. Welcome everyone, I'm Chatty and this is my channel Chatty's My Chatter and I'm going to be chatting very madly about what I'm going to be reading in the month of May. So as you can see I have my TBR game Bookworms and Book Ladders ready to go um, and I have my little gimmicky cup so cheers everyone, clink clink clink. I do not edit on this channel, I only have the power of pause to help me so it could be full on chaos. So in May I am going to be taking part in the Spoonies Readathon. If you're not sure what that is I will leave a link to the announcement video here so you can go and check that out. It is a readathon um, highlighting disability representation in books and it had, has been created by Emily from the channel No Fall Novels and it is co-hosted by Kat from Brews and Reviews. Um, they've got a lot of fun stuff happening so you should definitely go and check them out. Now, so I have books in mind that I want to read for that. Um, I usually take part in the Asian Readathon as well which is done by Cindy, I will put the links for that in the channel. Um, because I want to focus on the Spoonies Readathon and because I don't want to put myself under too much pressure because I get a little bit obsessed with readathons and a little bit carried away. Um, I am just going to be doing the minimal amount for the Asian Readathon, I will just be having one book that is by an Asian author and I haven't decided what that is yet, hence the game. Um, it would be lovely if I could combine the two but the books that I um, have in mind I either um, would have to buy and I don't want to be buying books right now or I've already read them such as Sweet Bean Paste and She Who Became the Sun. So um, I have four books in mind. So one is a book by an Asian author which I'm not sure of yet. Um, Two books are buddy reads and one book is a book that time has come for me to read and it's a big commitment. So not putting a huge amount of pressure on myself. We will see if those books come up throughout the game and if they do come up, um, so if I get two of those four books on my TBR, I will do six rolls. If I don't get any of those books on my TBR, I'm only going to do four rolls and then I will go through what those books are that I have in mind. So let me explain how the game is going to work. If you have been here before and you know all of this stuff, use the timestamp, skip ahead to when I explain what is going to be the colour options for this month. So to off, we will uh, see you later. Uh, if you're new here or you just want to refresh on how the game works, let me show you. So as you can see here, we have the board is based on snakes and ladders. I have worms instead of snakes because we are bookworms. So um, if I land on the head of a worm, I go all the way down to the tail and um, that is where I am. Um, so the worms, I have to pull a worrying worm prompt, which is um, more difficult to manage. So I have less choice, um, I am much more limited and it can be quite tricky. If I get to the bottom of the ladder, that's the thicker runged area, then I go whoop all the way to the top and I get a lucky ladder, which is a much um, kind of kinder to myself prompt. It gives me more scope, it gives me more of a variety of getting things that I specifically want to read or I'm excited for. And then um, we have four different colours. We have pink, yellow, green and blue. And all of those will be linked to a prompt that changes every single month because I don't want to get bored, I like to keep it fresh, I like to do different things. I also like to kind of make this work for me and be as much in control as possible whilst giving myself a wide variety of choice. Um, it works for me, it works for me. So we start off in the centre of the board each time. The board is just to kind of keep going, like there's no end goal, I just keep going until I decide I want to stop. Um, so on my first roll, so within this first level, um, I do one roll of the dice just realised I have not got any dice up so I will do that in a moment um, and I can choose whether I go and uh, whether I go clockwise or whether I go anti-clockwise and I can choose which way I come out from either the blue, yellow, green or pink and then that sets me up for the game and I know which way around the board we are moving. Um, if I get a ladder or a worm then I would progress on to the second level where we start hitting these library books around the outside and that just means I use two dice to move around instead of one. Uh, doubles don't mean anything but to keep it nice and fresh if I get more than um, 
two. For example, if I land on two blue prompt, prompts and then I roll again and it's a third blue prompt, I will not be doing the um I would not be doing that prompt because I don't want to do more than two because otherwise I find it gets a little bit dull. So I would then um I, I do have we're all mad here cards, which is more of a challenge, but I'm being kind to myself in May. I'm not prepared to do that this month. So I will just be um rolling again. So I will stay on the blue space but I will roll again for a different colour or ladder or worm, depending what we get. Okay, so let me talk you through what the colour prompts are going to be for this month. And we're going to get some dice. Hello and welcome back everyone who previously talked a lot. Um, so just to clarify, with my worrying worm cards, usually I would have the one ring in here and I would pick two, I would randomly choose two others to go alongside it. Um, I'm not doing that just because I don't want to be unkind to myself. <laughs> I have already said I, I'm planning, I'm not reading a huge amount this month or putting pressure on myself, so I don't want to have a book that someone else has chosen for me. It wouldn't be the right time. So I'm not doing that. So because I'm not doing the one ring for one ring for the worrying worms, um, I'm not going to be doing the Fiegel card for the lucky ladders, which is where I get to get a book out from under my bed. However, um, I have recently earned enough points to get a book out from under my bed. I finally managed to stop eating the Easter chocolate and went back on to eating more fruit and um, having some decent nights. So generally healthy stuff, hooray for me, um, which means I have now earned a book from under my bed. And I haven't pulled it out yet because I do have quite a selection of books under my bed, especially ones that are middle grade books that... Um, feature um, protagonist with a disability. So I thought I would save that as an option. So the books under my bed are an option because I have a one and I thought maybe I'd let the game help me pick which one I should read this month. Maybe. We will see. Um, so the coloured prompts I have here. So for if I land on a blue square I pull out a theme card. So I have a pile of theme cards here and that is something like a cold book or um, a book that is sort of has buildings. So like building the urban. So like those themes, either the cover or the title would need to give me those vibes and sort of like the vibes of the book in general could kind of fit under that category. That's theme card. Yellow is series spin. I really like to... Um, make sure I'm keeping up to date with my series. It works a lot better for me if I read them closer together, but I currently have about 20 on my list. So it would be nicer for that to come back down because I feel worried about starting new ones and then having a load of random series ongoing. So series spin, I will put some books out. I will do a spin and we'll see what it lands on. Uh, for green, we have roll away. So that is where I pull out um, six prompt cards. So these are kind of middle of the line prompt cards. So worrying ones are hard. L Lucky ladder gives me more, for, more choice. Prompt cards are kind of like in the middle. So we look at six of them. I then roll the dice and whichever it lands on, that is a prompt card I'm choosing. It just kind of, I just think it's quite fun to kind of look at what do I want? What do I really not want from those before finding out which one it's gonna be. And finally, we have gold dart if I land on pink. So this is where I'm considering what were my reading goals? What were my um, things I wanted to achieve by the end of the year in terms of my reading? Um, so things like reading more global majority, um, reading um, books that I've received in book boxes, that kind of thing. So I will then fire a Nerf gun at a target and we will see which one I hit. Okay, let's pop that book back up there and then I'm just going to have a little bit of tea in my lovely Alice in Wonderland um, teacup mug. Thank you Vidania. And let's start the first roll. Okay <laughs> so I have my dice I'm just choosing one going for red today so let's give that a good shake and it is a four. So that's nice and simple to start with. We have a four and we go round either clockwise or anti-clockwise, but basically I can only land on colours. I can only land on these no matter where I start from. So it just depends which colour I fancy landing on 
And I'm going to go for series spin. And I'm going to go clockwise just because it works better in my head. <laughs> so here we go. One, two, three, four. So I've just selected a stack of books from these shelves here to choose from. So only, so it's kind of half and half. Three would class as starting a new series and three would class as continuing. So one book that I hadn't officially kind of referred to as being part of a series, but it is, is Kidi um, by L. Nick McNichol. So Kidi is a prequel to A Kind of Spark, which I read last, I think it was November, with Tiffany from Towering TBR and absolutely loved that book. So we have both been highly anticipating Kidi. So this could work because it is part of a series. Um, another book that I had, I was hoping to read this um, last month, uh, but it didn't, it, well, I still got a little bit of time left, but I, it's not going to be happening. So um, I have Wilder Than Midnight by Kerry Burnell. And there is a second book out. I can't, it could be Softer Than Starlight. It could possibly be. Um, so this would also count as the first book in a series. I've been wanting to read this for a really long time. So that's an option. Continuing a series is a book that I really wanted to get to in <laughs> from January. And that is the Undertakers by Nicole Glover. I read and absolutely loved The Conductors and ever since I've been wanting to pick this up but it just hasn't been the right time so this could work. Then starting a new series I have City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. This was one of the books that you voted for of a series that I should start and finish this year so we could start that. Also on that list, I also have The Daughter of the Moon Goddess, which was the duology that you said I should start and finish this year. And both City of Brass and um, Daughter of the Moon Goddess are by um, Asian authors. So that would work um, as options for the Asian readathon. Finally, I have this big chunker, Icebringer by Brandon Sanderson. I started off rereading The Way of Kings. I then reread Words of Radiance. I then started rereading Oathbringer, got distracted by readathons. This is the biggest book I own. It's over a thousand pages. For readathons, you sometimes feel like you want to read more books and hit more prompts. So it was not its time. And I hadn't picked it up since then, and that was two years ago. So I haven't finished my reread, and I have never read Rhythm of War, which is the fourth book. So this would work. Let's go and see which one's going to win the spin. Here we go. They are all set out um, using one of these spinners from my children's games. <laughs> if it lands on the moon, it's Oathbringer. If it lands on the uh, flying saucer, it's Kidi. If it lands on the, what do you call that? Alien. <laughs> if it lands on the alien, it's the Undertaker's. If it lands on Earth, it's Daughter of the Moon Goddess, which really should have been the moon, but I didn't think that through. If it lands on Saturn, it's Wilder Than Midnight. And if it lands on the astronaut, it is City of Brass. So let's see which one it is going to be. And it is Earth, which is Daughter of the Moon Goddess. So here we go. We have Daughter of the Moon Goddess, which is a fantasy romance um, or a fantasy with romantic elements um, from Su Lin Tan. It is the first in the Celestial Kingdoms duology. Um, I very much feel that either you enjoy this book or you don't enjoy it. Um, people who love it really love it. I feel, I mean, definitely from the cover, I feel that it will have like very kind of beautiful language in it. Um, I'm really looking forward to exploring this myth of the moon goddess and learning more about Chinese mythology. Um, but I do know the relationship is less on the mother and daughter from what I understand and much more on the daughter and love interests and kind of like her mission to help her mum from what I know. But I don't know much and I've managed to keep it that way. So I'm excited to be starting this duality and seeing what I think of it. And hopefully I love it because the cover is so ridiculously beautiful. 
And these sprayed edges, this is a fairy loot edition, and it's absolutely breathtaking. It is so gorgeous. Hopefully it will live up to the cover. Fingers crossed. On to roll number two. So we are still on the first level, so it's one dice and it's a three. Moving clockwise, we go, ooh, come off, one, two, three, and we are on green. So green is roll away. So I'm going to choose six prompt cards now. And I always do this. <laughs> I always start off by just needing to shuffle. Even though I've already shuffled and I could just pick the top six, I don't. I don't know why. It's just how my hands feel. So we've shuffled, we've shuffled. So one is starting a new series. Not sure how I feel about that at the moment. <laughs> Two is an epic book. Definitely have one in mind for that. Three is Expanding My Horizons, a book by a BIPOC author. So um, that's Black, Indigenous, Person of Colour, a global majority author. Definitely have things I can work with. Um, an elephant book over 500 pages. Again, I have stuff I can work with. Um, five, we have a blank card, which should not be in there. I thought I took that out. Um, an author I have not read from before. Yes, we can work with that one. Um, <laughs> author or title starting with the letter blah. Don't want this one. <laughs> don't want it. Don't want it. Don't want it. Don't want it. Okay, let's put these out and let's roll a dice. So new series and also um, author I have not read from before um, could both be um, could both be the same. I could read City of Brass or Wilder Than Midnight. I have not read another book by S.A. Chakraborty or by Kelly, Kelly Burnell. Um, I also have a couple of other ones um, with mental health represent representation um, and some um, books that I have in mind um, other books I have in mind with disabilities for the non-fiction part that I could use so um, those could work um, an epic book I definitely have something in mind and it's the same thing as an elephant book over 500 pages um, expanding my horizons a book by a black indigenous or person of color author again city of brass undertakers also possibly have some other ones as well and um, I could still use the option of looking under my bed because I have some in there of earning a book I do not want author or title with the letter, whatever it is, because that just limits my choice. I don't want it. So let's see what we have. Number one will be new series. Two, an epic book. Three, expanding my horizons, um, a global majority author. Four, an elephant sized book over 500 pages. Five, author if not read from before. And six, author or title starting with the letter something or other. Okay, got my dice ready for my pot. It's a six. <laughs> Darn it! <laughs> it's a six. It's the one I didn't want. It's an author or title starting with the letter, whatever. Well, at least this is entertaining for all of you, isn't it? Now, my alpha blocks have gone walkies, but luckily, I've got banana grams to help me. So this isn't as bad as the worrying worm, where it specifies whether it's the author's last name or the title of the book that needs to start with this letter. I have a lot more leeway. It could be the author's surname, the author's first name, or the title of the book. So I have more wiggle room. Got one, and it is A. Okay, let's see what I can do with this. Um, I mean, a kind of spark would have been great, <laughs> but that's not, it's not what I need to read right now. Uh, so, ooh, 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 perfect. The Secrets of Haven Point by Lizette Orton. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you for uh, not defeating me. So this is one of the books I wanted to get on the list. It is the group read for the Spoonies Readathon. Uh, it's a middle grade. It's a fantasy. I'm so excited for this. I did start reading this. I got this book out of the library and started reading it just because I was excited for it. But I was also trying to do quite a few things and it was the autumn. So this feels a lot more summery and springy because of the sea <laughs> and the seasidey feel and it's got mermaids. Um, 
so I, I, I said, it's not, it's time. I really want to enjoy this. It's not, it's time. And I'm so pleased because now it means I get to join in the buddy read. Um, I am thrilled. So yes, Secrets of Haven Point. And my copy I got from the independent bookshop Liberia in London and it has been stamped. It's very exciting. So this book tells the story of the Wrecklings. So this is a place on the coast where um, children basically kind of have just made this found family place here. And um, most of the children like feel like outsiders for whatever different reason. Um, our protagonist um, has a physical um, disability and um, I don't know any more than that. Um, it's something to do with they earn their, like basically they earn their keep by wrecking ships. And there's something happening with the mermaids. Sometimes they're friendly, some mermaids are friendly, some aren't. And that's all I know. But what I did read, I really enjoyed. Um, and um, I can't wait, can't wait to read it. So I'll stop waffling about it and go on to the next roll. <laughs> so, so far, very excited. Roll number three, still on the first level of the board. So still the one dice. We have another three. Okay, uh, we are going through all the colours. We have one, two, three is pink. And pink is the goals dart. So I have a Nerf gun and I am going to shoot at my wall that I've divided into four, roughly. Um, and uh, let's see if I can work out what I hit. Um, oh, one of the post-its have just fallen off. I'll have to go re-put that in. Um, I have given myself a few uh, few darts in case I cannot tell. Um, so let's see how this goes. Look at the uh, artistry here. I have four post-sticky notes with roughly scribbled goals on them. So in the top left corner, um, we have non-fiction. The top right is global majority. The bottom left is middle grade and the bottom right is a book box book. Okay, let's see. Oh, uh, da, 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 da. okay, right. I'm standing here and I'm going to aim at the middle and hopefully we can, uh, well, let's let me aim with my eyeballs and then film. I don't know if this is, this is not going to work, is it? We'll give it a go. Okay. On my judgment, there is not a dart in that would that would help, wouldn't it? Apologies, someone is drilling. Right, let's do this. Oh my goodness, I literally just practiced and it's being a pain. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 